Hello! A robe was the best I could do today. And I will link the robe down below. <laughs> today we're going to be comparing a very requested brand, which is Farah Hamidi, with the brand that really comes to mind when I use it, and that is my beloved Westman Atelier. Then I went into my foundation drawer and I get in the weeds and I pulled out all of my kind of stiff balm concealer foundation-y products. And I will do like a brief comparison of all of them really. But these are the two that I'm going to be applying. I also, to the tune of, you know, $160 total, something like that. Oh my God. Got the Farah Hamidi Lip and Cheek, I guess it is. And I'm going to probably be comparing that to Garçon, I guess, from uh, West Atelier and probably put it on my lips, compare it to the Lip Suede Nudes. And I'm doing this because I feel like these are so simple and straightforward and so expensive that they are a product that feels really binary. It's like, is this something that's gonna solve my routine or not? And I feel like it's so important to put those kinds of things in context so that you're not swept up in the fantasy. I want to talk about performance today and whether these are practical for you. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so quickly, description on these products. They are not cheap. The Farah Homidi Essential Face Compact Refillable Concealer and Foundation is $88 or $48 to refill it. So that is a $40 forever compact and it is the same with the essential lip refillable compact there are 30 shades in the concealer foundation situation and there are eight shades in the essential lip refillable compact they list eight on the sephora website like on the page before you click through to the product page but that's very misleading because it's four it's four full size and then they also list the refills which are the same four colors as separate colors so it's really only four colors two reds two nudes i got like i said nude two because the first one was a little bit too pink and i just feel like this is such a better shade for me it's kind of my red lip you know so we'll see how it shakes out swatch wise against the other things that i have from westman atelier because i do want to try and compare apples to apples as much as possible now if you're unfamiliar with westman atelier welcome welcome to this lovely package this is not yet refillable but it is apparently in the works this is one of the original products that was put out by Gucci Westman and I have had now this is my third one of these only because she released better shades she broadened the shade range after they got into Sephora it's still not perfect but there are more and I ended up having an even better match than the one that I had just repurchased so I have Atelier 0 and Atelier 0.5 which is what I have right here the Westman Atelier stick has been at $68 since the beginning of time all of this inflation and everything that we're seeing in makeup it's been $68 since Tati reviewed it years ago so at the time it was incredibly pricey and now it doesn't seem completely insane because they've just sort of stood still while everyone else kept raising their prices around them there are 21 shades in the Westman Atelier. You get 0.31 ounces or nine grams. And in the refillable compact here, you get 0.13 ounces or 3.7 grams. And I know that people are like, well, you can't compare a stick to a cream. In this case, you can, because I don't use this as a stick foundation. I just use it as a cream. And I think that that's the way it's sort of intended to be used when you watch Gucci Westman use it. She just takes a brush onto the stick and just sort of pity pats it on the face. This is not something that I recommend shellacking yourself with. It's not like you can't, but I feel like other things are better for that. Like I, I'm gonna pull the Fenty out soon and that's, I would way more recommend using that all over your face than this. Let us commence with putting these on. I am premenstrual. Got one of those, got one of those. Got some of those. I'm generally a little more sallow because of hormones. And I think that that's going to lend itself quite nicely to this demo. I do though quickly want to read the description here because if you look at this up close, you can see that there's like a pan of highlight, cream highlight kind of in there. So I want to use it as directed because this is one of those products that I'm arriving to when I'm arriving to it. And I guarantee that there are people who are going to stand this in the comments. And if I do it wrong, even if I do it right, I will probably get a lot of critique. So anyway, I'm gonna do my best. It's vegan, clean at Sephora, no silicones, cream formula, cruelty-free, best for oily combo and normal skin. So 
I think that that is kind of the number one problem. I might have to sort of moisturize. I might add a primer on both sides because I wanna give it its best chance because it's not actually recommended for me necessarily because I'm so dry. So I don't wanna be like, well, <laughs> this is really crusty. It's like, yeah, duh, you know, they didn't recommend it for you. But I think with a primer, we can get an idea. And this isn't my first time trying this. So that's also like my <laughs> awareness kicking in, I guess. Medium coverage. Natural finish, how to use, suggested usage, start with exfoliated, moisturized skin, use a rounded side of a buffer brush, sold separately, to apply a thin layer of smooth veil soft matte, apply a minimal amount of product starting from the inside of the face and working outward in short buffing strokes. Use the flat side of the buffer brush, apply a shine balm. For drier skin, apply a thin layer of shine balm before smooth veil soft matte. Where coverage is needed for oilier skin, just apply the smooth veil soft matte and it's glide shine balm. Come on, khaki. Glide shine balm onto cheeks, nose, and brow bone for a bright, dewy, lifted look. All right, let's do all of that first. I do think that it's interesting that she is recommending kind of using this more than just as a spot concealer. It's like, hey, I invite you to put this all over your face. So as I was reading, actually, it says that you only really wanna use this underneath something where you need coverage, and I don't know where I need coverage and where I don't yet. So I am actually <laughs> going to use a primer. I'm just gonna use the NARS Light Reflecting Hydrating Primer. I think it's going to be a great base for both sides. It's more skincare than anything, so I don't think that it's going to like alter our results in any unfavorable way. We're going to do what she said and kind of take a buffer brush like that. This is my CL. We're gonna gently waft this onto the skin, you know, not looking for full coverage here, but let's see. So I have this in creme and it is a really, really nice match. It is, I feel like, oof. <laughs> I am just not sure that that, mm. I thought it was a nice match. Let's see. She wants me to apply it really thinly. It is very highly concentrated as far as coverage. Like you really don't need a lot, but I didn't use a lot and it did icky stuff right there. Ew, I don't like that. I don't like that. No, 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 no. Okay, let's wipe the primer off and see. This is, this has to be scientific. But I mean, to some extent, I'd be using a moisturizer anyway, right? Ooh, I've got some uh, Triple Lip Restore 242 over here. Skinceuticals, baby. Let's go. This is usually my winter moisturizer, but it will be really nice for this. Whenever things don't kind of perform optimally the first try, you start to sort of churn in your brain like, oh God, you know what? am I going to be told in the comments that I did wrong, you know? Because something like this shouldn't be that hard to use on my skin. I have experienced many things like this, like um, the Monica Blunder Blunder cover, and it's flawless. The only reason I don't have it is because I over-tightened mine, and I broke it, and I have yet to buy another one. Let's see. That's slightly better. It's still not lovely. I would not dream of powdering this. Let me show y'all the f actual texture of this. Cause I mean, it is really, whoa, intensely thick, but it looks really beautiful and creamy. Like it doesn't seem like there'd be any reason for it to like drag and dry out on the skin, but there's matte and then there's this. And I just feel like the matteness even if you had like oily skin, if your under eyes are aged <laughs> at all, it's just, it's not particularly flattering. And there's something about matte medium coverage that just doesn't agree <laughs> because it's like, you can still see through it, but it's also absorbing light because of the matte finish. And so it just, is making the skin underneath look really artificial and strange. And it's like when I want to use something that has very little coverage or I wanna use it selectively, you know, regardless of whether or not this is meant for my skin, the coverage itself looks really unnatural. Like I don't feel like that looks like no makeup. It looks like, it looks like not good makeup. So 
Let's see how it kind of like settles on the skin. Right now it is truly just sitting on top like clay. And what's interesting too is that the Westman Atelier is a really similar texture. Like you barely need any of it. It is also very intensely pigmented and very not super dewy on the skin. Like it is kind of a matte finish. I would call it like a natural finish. I don't know, let's just put it on and I'll show you. I'm gonna do the same thing, I guess. Just, you know, use a sponge. I've never had any kind of issue applying this in any particular way, other than, like I said, you know, putting it all over my face. I would not recommend that. But yeah, that's a little bit light for me right now. Summertime skin. I'll go in with the other one, which is funny I say that it's light. 0.5 is more than zero, but zero is pinker? I don't know, it's very interesting. Either way, it is much more effective in terms of coverage. Ooh, actually, okay, 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 okay. The Farhamidi is like sinking in now. You can see it like warmed to my skin. Okay, okay. Okay. I don't love it underneath my eyes, but like it's taken on a much nicer finish right here on my cheeks. Interesting. This isn't a first impression, but I hadn't read the directions before and I was using it very much just with my finger as like a spot conceal the last couple of times. And it didn't bother me because it sticks to blemishes pretty well and it's a pretty good shade match. So like I didn't have any complaints, but the way that she instructed to use it, those results left a little to be desired. But it is, it's um, it's doing something prettier now that it's getting a chance to adjust. So if you take like a brush here, use it to spot conceal a little bit with the Wesmo Atelier, this stuff's pretty incredible. It makes everything just sort of disappear. I'm also really pigmented right now. So it's like hard to really nail down what my match is because there's just so much freckling and stuff, so. I will say, my Atelier is a lot more cost effective, for sure, but she still hasn't come out with, we're at like a space race kind of situation. She still hasn't come out with replaceable packaging, I don't think, so. That is a, a point on the side of the Farhamidi. All right, I'm gonna take that same brush and we're gonna do the same thing on this side, just, you know, getting a little bit more coverage out of the Farhamidi. Now that I'm a little less afraid to use it, because I was like, what is happening? But now that I know it's gonna kind of warm a little bit, and she did say if I want more coverage, I should start with the balm. So I kind of want a little more coverage underneath my eye and that might be in the wrong order, but I like that she included the balm, I guess, just as an option for people like me who need a little bit more like emollients to the formula because it is very concentrated. So that makes sense. Hmm, it's not bad. It's really not bad. I still feel like it's kind of an unnatural coverage level though. I wish that like the balm was always combined with it kind of thing. So I'm going to add the balm sort of a lot of places, which is I think sort of one of the recommended uses here. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of an unusual product type. So it's like you have to respect the instructions pretty well and like trust the process a little bit to be able to get the results because if you go into it and you're just like, I just want this to behave like everything else. It's like, well, then why did you buy it? <laughs> Why did you buy something interesting if you didn't want it to be different? Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh I don't like that at all. Oh boy. Oh that's so much better, okay, wow. Not a brush, not a brush, not a brush. Don't do it, don't do it. It leaves marks. Yeah, when I did the brush, this was all just like sitting on top of the skin and you could see every brush mark, but like the sponge gives it such a better finish. That's very, very pretty. That's very, very pretty. I'm not sure it's worth the amount of work, but it's very pretty. I'm gonna try and add a little more coverage underneath my eyes here. And then we will move into this little lip product from her. And let me see if I can get a little bit more spot concealing right there on my big friend. And I feel like this is the advantage of the Westman Atelier is when you need it, it comes in clutch and is full coverage, but it can also 
be medium coverage. I would be interested to know from the folks in the comments who have oily skin, whether you can wear the Westman Atelier because it's never been particularly dewy on me. It's always worn in a really nice secure way, but I am only one human being and I live in the Northeast of the United States now, not in Austin, Texas, where I used to live, where I was able to do these wear tests that were very high intensity because I was in the sun all the time and in the humidity and I was sweating. Now, now I don't do a lot of wear tests because it's like, it's all gonna be fine. <laughs> it's dry here, like, you know, it's usually an okay temperature or a horribly cold temperature. <laughs> it's not a lot of like extreme conditions in terms of heat, so. Let's move into this little buddy here. I'm going to start by swatching this and I'll read the instructions as well because this also has a balm, but it is not highlighty. The color itself is not screwing around whatsoever. Like once you get it on your finger, it has a hard time coming off. It is a very, 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 very tenacious formula. Like seems like it wants to be very long wearing. Not how I would describe the lip suede from Westman Atelier. But again, it's like the lip suede from Westman Atelier feels sort of like you mixed these two together in maybe a higher proportion of the balm than she would recommend, than Farhamini would recommend. And then I also have a lipstick from Westman Atelier that's, uh, I don't know, at least a similar formula. It might not be the same color. Aha, there she is. Okie dokie. So the lip suede is so hard to open. Somebody told me I got a lemon. I was like, well, if that's the case, I'm going to swap it out for my highlighter compact because, oh my Lord in heaven, because I don't use, I'm probably not gonna use the highlighter. I also have the bronzer. I also have the powder. I could definitely swap it out for the powder. I'm never gonna use the powder. I don't like it. So here we have the lip suede in Le Nude. And this only comes in one, you know, version of Le Nude. Very similar color profile. I feel like we're really going for the same thing here. And I'm gonna leave her open because that was a pain. And you know, the compacts really beg comparison. They look so similar to each other. The Farhamidi, you're gonna get 0.13 ounces or 3.7 grams. And this you're getting uh, 0.16 ounces or 4.8 grams. So a little bit more in here and they both have replaceable pans, but the Westman Atelier has a pinhole in the back and Farhamidi's has, hers is a lot easier to open, has a little like thumbnail thing that pulls out like that, but also has a little thing that it fits into. It all has details, you know what I mean? Like it's, there's these luxury things because it's like she wants you to put it in there in the right orientation and for it to stay so that it's not like swimming around when you try and touch it. Whereas like the Westman Telly doesn't really swim around in there, but it is wildly magnetic. And I think that that's why. So anyway, I want to find that West Metelier lipstick real quick and then we'll jump into applying these. So I have PK from West Metelier, which is a very, ooh, wow, actually right there, you know, near it in color. So I think that it's gonna be a more relevant comparison because it's such a powder matte. It's much more similar to this than the nudes are. I will close her up, never to be heard from again. I'm gonna start with the Farah Hamidi just because there's a little bit more <laughs> finagling to putting it on. You don't just put it on. And I think that that might be my only criticism that I feel like is an outlier at this point between these two experiences is just that like, there's so much ceremony to getting this on your face that I'm not sure that I would reach for it as often as I would something that it just feels like fewer steps than this, you know? I'm gonna see if she recommends using it on the cheeks. Uh, start with exfoliated lips, prep with Prime Balm which is I'm assuming what that part is. So let's do that. Moving from center of the lips, blah, blah, blah. Beauty tip, blur out edges. Yeah, no, it, she's not saying that it's a lip and cheek. So, although I might try it, but then I won't hold her accountable if it doesn't work great, you know? I mean, if you, you wanna get your money's worth. Okay, starting with this here balm, because that's going to prime us. And we are, I think, going to get that kind of like imperfect French girl powder matte lip. It is white. You can see that. So I don't know. It added some opacity and possibly some ashiness even to my very unpigmented lips. I'm taking the tiniest amount here. I'm just going to tippy tap. And I did get a darker shade than probably would be recommended for me just because it's supposed to be kind of a nude too. And I would definitely be considered like a, you know, the fairest 
nude in that category, you know? But I just think that this is a more flattering undertone on me than the other one. All right, still plenty left on my finger. This is a really, really, really saturated formula. And uh, oh, I wanna also swatch it against Garcon. This is such a chill video. I'm just like, ah! I'm just kind of blowing in the wind out here. I hope that it's like valuable to watch me sort of go through my intuition and my thought processes. So she's like feathered at the edges pretty. I think we'll put more on, but I want to put the lip suede lipstick on again in Piquet, Piquet and do a similar thing here. But since it's not, you know, combined with another product, I'm just going to use it straight from the tube, assuming that it doesn't need some kind of primer. It's much more consistent. It's much easier to use. Whereas I feel like this one, I feel like it's someone's, you know, ideal method of putting something like this on, but it's quite fussy, quite, quite fussy for what I don't really feel like is a better outcome. I want to swatch this against Garçon. It's a very pretty color. I'll blend it out like that. So yeah, I mean, Garçon is very similar to Piquet. And so we're going to end up with something very tonal on this side and something very tonal on this side because the Farhamidi is, you know, just going to use the lip as a cheek kind of thing. I think that that's okay. They don't have to be perfect, perfect. I just think that those are probably the most comparable shades that we're going to get here. I just didn't want to go towards the reds. I mean, there's no faster way for me to give something a poor review than for it to just look terrible on me because of the color that it is. And that's what would happen if I were wearing like red, like candy apple red. It does not work on me. Okay. I'm just going to use the back of the sponge. We're going to go first with Garcel. This is an incredibly beautiful formula. I have almost all of them. It's just something I have collected over the years. They last a really long time. That's so freaking pretty. Uh, I've always had a passion for her formulas. I just feel like especially, because I did all clean beauty in 2019. I called it clean routine 2019. And what I discovered is that the clean beauty space is just loaded up with a bunch of little mom and pop brands that are just not good, you know, they don't perform. And so when you come across something like Westman Atelier or that same year was when Victoria Beckham started her clean line, ooh, it's just night and day. You know, you're like, oh, this makeup behaves like makeup and exceptionally so. So obviously no bronzer or anything, but let's see what happens. So let's just see what happens, you know? Beep, 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 beep. This is not what she says to do. I just want to see, okay? And I'm just touching it in there. Okay, definitely not as scary as I thought. It's very much like a powder matte. Does it say that? Does it say that it's a powder matte? Color plush soft matte, either way. Oopsies, haha. <laughs> Bear in mind, you know, there's a no like all over complexion product going on. So you're gonna see freckles and stuff through it. I think that that's beautiful. I think that that is, comparably beautiful. And it does start to make you think like, okay, well, there are use cases for this outside of it just being a lip color that make it, that's like one more point towards it being a little more efficient because applying it as a lip product is not particularly efficient. It takes two seconds to put on the Westman Atelier and this was, oopsies, this was a lot fussier than that. What a pretty color though. It's giving like sunburn. Okay, so. That's beautiful. This is beautiful. And then that is also beautiful. Obviously this has a little higher contrast and it's just a little bit warmer. I'm gonna just, you know, whip on the rest of my makeup here and then we will go into kind of an overview of how the Farhamidi compares to the rest of the comparable things in my collection to see if you have something that you already like and then I will give you final thoughts. Shut up. I think they're just like cutting down trees or something. Like, why do you need to beep like that? <laughs> Don't you know I'm working? <laughs>
I think we got where we were going. I think that they are, when you look at them separately, two very different faces of makeup, just based on the undertone and the contrast. Nonetheless, I think that I have enough information for final thoughts between them, but quickly, let's go ahead and talk about how it compares to the other stick and balm foundations that I have in my collection. Like I said, I don't have, unfortunately, my blender cover anymore. I need to like buy it again. All right, so we're not really talking about undertone here. I'm just gonna talk about the formulas. So again, we have the Westman Atelier. I would call it like a natural finish and it is quite high coverage, but it's really flexible in terms of coverage. The Farhamidi is, again, medium coverage, so there they are. But I am going to be mostly just describing these to y'all. So next I have, like I said, I wanted to pull out the Fenty because this is one that I would recommend putting all over the face and it is, a slippy dream of a product, especially for folks with dry skin. I mean, it is just up there in the prettiest, lightest wearing formulas ever. I did just buy her new blushes and her new lip, so we will be reviewing those, but they have not been doing well on deep skin social media, so um, I will take all of that into account. But God, that is a really pretty color profile, isn't it? I think it's prettier than that color profile. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so a completely different use case. You could argue that's a foundation and those are concealers. Same goes for this right here, which I adore and does have a really great shade range. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Unreal Skin Sheer Glow Tint. I'm sorry, that was not satisfying for y'all. Charlotte Tilbury. I have this in 1.5 and it's a, it's a freaking delight, okay? Super shimmery, like the Hollywood Flawless Filter, but it is a fantastic base for like a no makeup makeup look. And it doesn't look like especially incredible on camera, but it looks phenomenally fabulous in person. And it's so lightweight on the skin that it can actually kind of bear powder. Like it does a really good job. I like that stuff a lot. This is one that I feel like got, <sighs> poor reviews and I don't really know why. I think it's another product that people tried to put it all over their face and I just don't think that that's what it's for. So this is the Skin Rewind Complexion Stick from Ilia and I really feel like they were coming for Westman Atelier on this one and it's really pretty, okay? I like it a lot. It's right there. It is such an insanely good shade match for me. This is 4N Holly. It's just one of those things where I pull it out to use it kind of like I used these and I just find that the Westman Atelier works better for less effort, but it's also a little bit dewier. So I want to kind of keep testing this like underneath my eyes and stuff because I feel like I have a little bit of like bias towards the West Mentelli because I've been working with it for so long, but I do really, really like this. I just talked to a lot of people who really didn't and that does influence my review over time because it's like, I don't want to tell people to buy something that people are having really mixed experiences with because it's not a cheap product, you know? It shouldn't matter either way. All right, so Bosma. This is a problem. <laughs> Bosma, the component really doesn't want to stay together, but this is a gorgeous product, absolutely beautiful, and talk about a foundation shade range, my goodness gracious. This is a really flexible foundation product. You can wear it, you know, full coverage as a concealer and wear it all over the face. It's gorgeous. It's a flawless product. You really don't get very much of it, but it is what it is. It does have the claim to wear at full coverage really well because the founder of Bosma is a burn survivor and so she uses it to cover her burns and things like that. Like that was why she formulated it. I find that as a medium coverage, it's absolutely beautiful. Like that's how I prefer to wear it. So I love this stuff. And again, the shade range is bananas. And then this is probably one of the most polarizing ones. Ew, it's got like my eyebrow hairs in it. Fun, great, I won't show you that too closely. This is the ABH Beauty Balm. It is truly a beauty balm but I like it, <laughs> okay? I like it because of what it actually is. I think that trying to wear this as a foundation is like trying to wear the what the foundation from Jones Road as a foundation. Now, does this have as much benefit to it as that? No, probably not, but it's also not as expensive as that, I don't think. But I think it's very much just a balmy base, not meant to be a lot of coverage. And I feel like she kind of got misconstrued in her intentions because everybody's used to ABH being so like makeup-y. This was very off the beaten path, I feel like, for ABH. So anyway, I liked it, but it is nothing like any of these. In fact, it's most like probably the Charlotte Tilbury except without shimmer. But the Charlotte Tilbury is still a more sophisticated formula. It does, it doesn't like dry down. None of these dries down because nothing that's in a cream format like that is going to dry down or it would be dry in the stick. But it needs to be lightweight enough on the skin 
that it like has a, a little bit of technology to it, right? That it doesn't just stay slippy and weird and greasy and like make powder gum up and turn into some kind of clay. So as far as the difference between these two, honestly, by the time you get them on, the performance is pretty identical. Like I was able to, once everything warmed to my skin, get this to perform in a way that's, you know, not looking any crepier underneath the eyes than anything else. I feel like the complexion product does layer over the balm nicely and things like that. I just find that this is too fussy. Like it's just fussy, you know? I, I did put a little bit of the, the balm highlight on. It's so beautiful. It really is. Like, look at that. That's gorgeous. And if that's worth it to you, then more power to you. Like if this does simplify your routine, more power to you. This doesn't simplify my routine. It doesn't. It's just a little too, uh, you know, there's like too much kind of like having to babysit it and like the patience with it and stuff. Whereas I feel like this is just so straightforward. So from a performance standpoint, they're virtually identical. Just from a like using it standpoint, this is just a lot easier and more intuitive. And then the lip, I feel like the main thing about the lip and honestly cheek is the uniqueness of this color. Like I really, really dig this color. I think that this ended up being a much prettier face of makeup on this side because it looks so healthy versus this, which is, you know, it's pretty, but it's not doing me as many favors by comparison because it's just a little cooler. And that's not the fault of the formulas. It's truly just the colors. And it does function really beautifully again as a blush as well as the lip product but i also feel like having it be this extraordinarily high pigment product yes that's pretty like cost efficient i think cost effective but to have it you know split and combined with the balm in order for you to have that option versus them just being mixed together because i don't feel like you would use this straight from the pan it is that pigmented i'll show you it is so intensely pigmented. Like, that's just how it goes on if you're not careful. And I don't think that that's a bad look. It's just, it's high contrast to be using something that's like this fiddly to put on. Now, I think it'll probably wear all day. And that's definitely someone's ideal lip. I just would rather put it on out of a bullet and have it be done than all of that fussing. Final thoughts, I feel like Farhamidi, which you know, is the new girl in this video, is just reaching a little too far with that price point. I understand that this is a forever component. I don't think that these are bad products, but if you're new to my channel, I will tell you, if you're old to my channel, you've heard it a million times, I am not unwilling to pay for a luxury experience if what I'm getting is a luxury experience. I love luxury and I'm willing to pay the price for it if I feel like I'm getting champagne, you know? This is just kind of pedestrian to put on. Like it feels very like, I don't know, Urban Outfitters makeup when you're putting it on for it being $88 a compact, you know? It feels kind of like Ritual Defeat or something. Like it feels kind of hip versus feeling like luxury. And I don't think that like luxury and being cool are mutually exclusive, but I do feel like we are like not quite meeting the price point with the amount of luxury that we get with these. And that just might be a preference, but I also like that I don't have to stick my fingers in anything with Westman Atelier. I don't have to. I'm not a big fingers girl to begin with, so I guess that makes me a little bit more biased. Hopefully though, just like any of my videos, my conclusion is not really the final word for you. I hope that I gave you the information to feel empowered to kind of decide for yourself because I don't feel like either of these is a flop. My camera did die a second ago and it gave me a moment to swatch <laughs> the Farhamidi lip because it's such an incredible color that I wanted to make sure that we had some like dupes for it that aren't $88. And by God, y'all, it's right there in the family with Toasted Teddy. So if you watched my last video, saw Toasted Teddy from Rode, this is the Farhamidi, this is Toasted Teddy, this is Inferno from Phytosurgeons, and this is Ignite from Phytosurgeons. I would say that Ignite from Phytosurgeons is probably the most similar, but I mean, we are splitting hairs. It's just got like that little tiny bit more mauve to it, but I don't think that you could go wrong. I feel like by the time they get on that's what we're working with, you know? So I don't know in terms of like lip colors specifically, but there's no reason you couldn't use those on your lips. And I mainly just think it's a really beautiful, like rich blush. Anyway, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, if you found it valuable, please do give the video a thumbs up. If this was your first time on my channel, 
I got the point across, then uh, subscribe while you're here. This is what we do. We deep dive on products. I try and compare them to the best of my ability in 4K so that you can make the best decision for yourself. I also have an art degree, so we talk a lot about applying color theory and painting techniques to makeup, and I also do a little bit of commentary here and there. So if that sounds good to you, then subscribe while you're here, and I want to thank y'all for being here. My current subscribers, y'all are the best. I love you so much. I'll put a video up here that I think you'll enjoy if you liked this one. I love y'all, and I I will see y'all in the next one.